Welcome to Authentic Living with Roxanne, a place where we have conscious conversations about things that really matter in our lives. And now, here's your host, Roxanne Derhaj. Thanks for tuning in again uh, this week. I have a special, I would say, bestie friend, <laughs> uh, Louise Mercier Sadler here with us uh, today. Uh, Louise has been a uh, guest uh, previously on my podcast going back, probably one of the original ones, wasn't it, Louise? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so Louise uh, brings a wealth of information uh, to us today, but, but something I think um, we often talk about, but I'm not so sure that we focus on it in day-to-day -day kind of circles, maybe your are clinical circles. But uh, so Louise has brought, um, she's a clinical psychotherapist and she has been in the field for over 25 years working um, at a huge hospital system here in our, our area and has specialties in addictions along with um, using different modalities. But today what the focus is that I felt um, would be important to focus on was more the unconscious and there's different modalities but today Louise has um, specialized in uh, as a hypnotherapist uh, which I thought would be fascinating to chat about um, because oftentimes we talk about therapy and we talk about kind of you know what's involved in therapy but I'm not sure that people know the different kind of approaches to kind of what I'm going to say bypass the unconscious so Louise is there anything that I miss that um, you'd like the uh, viewers or listeners to know about you? You know, basically, you know, I mean, you've covered my uh, my my background fairly well. Um, you know, I have I have uh, primarily worked in addictions, but recently, sort of started just just kind of taking a different um, approach to change the work using the power of the unconscious mind. So let's talk about that because I know, and you know, in our worlds, <laughs> we talk about that, and you know, to the average layperson, they're like, uh. Oh, no, no. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I'm conscious of what I do most of the times. And we know like almost they say is as high as 95% of our behavior is unconscious. So kind of tell me, you know, when you were training and kind of when you deal with people, what are some of the kind of primary thoughts that you keep in mind when someone presents to you with an issue? Well, I sort of thought maybe we could sort sort of take it a, a step back because, like you said, you know, people talk about the unconscious, and I know it's conscious, and you're absolutely right. So I, I want to give people the the education around the you know you're right. The unconscious mind makes up about ninety seven percent, and then our conscious mind about or sorry ninety three percent, and our conscious mind about seven percent. So if you take a if you if you think about the iceberg, you know, the old iceberg analogy you know, the top that's outside of the water is about 7%, the rest is underneath the water. And what we know about, about the conscious mind is it's where logic resides. It's where, you know, abstract thinking resides. It has the ability to, um, um, abs to understand abstract concepts and reasoning. So it, it's able to, it's that critical, I mean, that critical factor, right? That, that critical faculty that we all have. Um, and the <clears throat> unconscious is everything else. It is, it is the, our history. It is our memory. It is um, all of, all of the uh, autonomic systems. You know, we don't think about making our heart beat. We don't think about breathing. That just happens naturally. So our unconscious mind takes care of all that. Uh, however, the interesting thing is the unconscious mind does not have, it just does what it's told. It does not have the ability to reason or to consider abstract concepts. It does what it's told. So that's why the whole idea of, you know, when I talk about, you know, the narrative and how important the narrative is, I want you to keep that in mind because the subconscious mind is always, our conscious mind goes to sleep when we do, but our unconscious mind is constantly at work, it's constantly aware, um, and proof of that is our dreaming. Our dreaming is our unconscious mind actually processing things via metaphors. So, talk a little bit more about narrative because I'm not sure 
you know, you and I, <laughs> we're comfortable with this, with this language, but um, for people listening, when you say, you know, what's my narrative? What do, what do you mean by that, Louise? Right. So narrative is, is basically a story. <clears throat> and in this case, it's the story you tell yourself right? Because if you consider that your unconscious mind is always paying attention, it is always listening, right? And it does. And if you also combine that with it does what it's told. Mm -hmm. So if your story is things like, oh, I never get anything right. I'm such a klutz. Um, those sort of things, right? I am anxious. I am depressed, right? It, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't look at anything else. It goes, oh, I am depressed, okay, mm -hmm. right? Or I am a klutz or that sort of thing. So when I talk about narrative, I talk about the story that you tell yourself with your internal dialogue, right? The, the, the voice inside your head, that your own self-talk, so to speak. And also how you speak to others about yourself. Hmm. That's interesting, right? Because... You kind of think about, what do I say to myself? You know, now you're making me think, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I say affirmations. I say, you know, I'm, I'm lovely or I'm beautiful or I'm, I'm competent, but they still have that story wrapping itself in their minds, right? So I might be saying an affirmation, mm -hmm. but the, still the thoughts is kind of like that <clears throat> low grade energy of that story that I'm telling myself that I'm not shutting off. Is that what you mean? Well, sometimes, right? So, so, I mean, in some ways the narrative and is, is, you know, even, and that's why um, affirmations can work over time because if you tell yourself something for a long enough time and you believe it, right, you buy into it, right, that it would work. Where it wouldn't is you, set, you tell yourself affirmations and after you say the affirmation inside your head, it's like, yeah, right. Or yeah, I don't think so. Or it, there's a contradicting thought, right? Mm -hmm. Or a contradicting uh, statement. So, so absolutely. I mean, it can work to the positive or the negative, depending on what you do with that, right? So, um, and, and to think about that in terms of not just with respect to what you tell yourself, but also um, sort of what you can imagine, hmm. right? The imagination is very powerful. Okay. And in, in our world, I mean, way back when some of us were trained psychodynamically and we know that that looks at the problems and then along came a, a, a plethora of, of um, therapists, Virginia Satir and, you know, the, the Minnesota model around the solution focused stuff. And we started looking at solutions. Um, however, what my studies and, and what my training in hypnosis has taught me is that it's all about the desired state what is what is the desired state the desired outcome and really focusing on that so okay. how, how do you do that how do you do that in hypnosis can you can you kind of walk us through um you know that the concept that i'm saying certain things to myself but in the same breath i'm taking it away so let's say i you know i come to you or somebody listening comes to you and let's say they're struggling with um self-sabotaging um, talk, uh, you know, I can't achieve this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough, whatever. Right. Um, but I say affirmations every day, you know, I'm pretty good. It's all over my house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I tell people, you know, people hear about it and, you know, some of the motivational speakers will talk about that to put it everywhere you can be, but it's still not uh -huh. working. So how would you approach something like that? Typically with something like that and, 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 it, there's something underneath, right? So sometimes consciously you might be telling yourself something positive, you might be using affirmations, but there might be um, a self-limiting belief that's occurring at a, a subconscious level. There could be um, some old programming that's happening at the unconscious level. So part of what I would be looking for is what's underneath that, what's going on at the unconscious level, clearing out some of those things, uh, and then, and then putting in, you know, some, some, some strengths, putting in resources. Um, sometimes part of the work with hypnosis is using the analogy of a computer. We have programs that were installed a long time ago that 
don't work for us. They're no longer working for us. In fact, they're, they're causing us problems. So sometimes it's about using hypnosis to get into the unconscious mind to, to delete those programs and then to reinstall new programs that will move someone towards the vision they have or the life that they want to have. So can you define a blocking belief? Again, I know I'm asking things that you're saying, I can't believe she's asking me this, but I, mm-hmm. I don't, I think a lot of times, you know, we hear these things, but people may not know what it means. Right. So I'll give you an example from my personal life, mm-hmm. right? One of the, one of the things I was told when I was a child and growing up was, you know, oh, well, you know, we're not lucky like that. We don't, in our family, we're not lucky. We're, we don't, we don't have things like that happen to us, meaning good things. Right. And I grew up like that most of the time and believing that, yeah, you know, I'm just in my little box and, 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 you know, wonderful things don't happen to me. Right. We just, that just, that, that happens to other people. And as I got to be older, um, and, you know, had the experiences meeting different people, having different conversations, that sort of thing. At one point I got to the point where I thought, well, why not me? Mm-hmm. Who says that's true? Who says, you know, we don't, our family isn't like that. Who, why not me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's an example of a, of a, of a, of a thought or a, a self-limiting belief. Mm-hmm. Right. And from the time that I challenged that belief and once I started challenging it and being open to different things and even just being open to it, my life changed quite dramatically, actually. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know that, like, you know, the changes that happened in my life. So, you know, I went from small town girl, that kind of stuff. And the next thing I knew, I was traveling all over the world and doing all kinds of things and, mm-hmm. and, you know, ha- having a, you know, a, quite a change, quite a drastic change in my life. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good example, right? So, sometimes it could start anywhere. And oftentimes it may start, like you said, you know, early in our lives, and you're not even aware that you're telling yourself that until you go, hey, that's something I kind of hear myself thinking, where, right. where did that come from? And we may not be even aware that we're actually stopping ourselves from getting like all the things that you deserve, right? Exactly. So once you cleared that, then you were able to kind of decide what you were going to let into your life. Not that, oh, that's not for me. No, in fact, it then became a process of, you know, stating and looking at, you know, what I, what I wanted and what I, you know, how I saw my life going. And I mean, part of it was just being open to wonderful possibilities, but there were a few areas in my life where I was like, no, this is, this is, I think this is possible. I think Mm -hmm. this is out there, right? Right. This is a possibility for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And just kind of continuing to have that belief and looking at going, why couldn't that happen to me? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that, you know, that kind of thing in terms of, you know, that particular one was around a relationship and and have, you know, of course, a a mature relationship is possible, that sort of thing. And and just kept focusing on on the desired state. I know this is possible. I've I've seen it in other people, that sort of thing. And just keep focusing on walking towards it. So (laughs) let's talk about desired state, because I'm sure everybody is listening is thinking, um, (laughs) yeah, I want a better relationship. Um, I want to increase things at um, my job, in my business, and, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. relationships with my children, all those things. Like, we all have goals, right? Yes. And how much of us kind of struggle with, (laughs) I'm not achieving those goals. Mm -hmm. I've been trying. I've been trying. Um, So Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there, Mm because the word try... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and there's the old joke about, you know, Yoda, do or don't do, there is no try. But when we talk about at, at the, 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 the level of the unconscious, the word to try implies failure. So okay. when I say I am trying to do something, what it is really is it's kind of a, it's a way out. It's a get out of jail free card. It's like, I'm not really doing it, but I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to say I'm not doing it. So I say I try. But really, it's it's try is is it that there's one example of where I would change my vocabulary is I'm either doing something or I'm not doing something. And it's and it's not around, you know, I, I think that people wouldn't necessarily use the word of, you know, I'm choosing not to do that right now, because it makes us feel bad as opposed to no, I'm not prepared to do that right now. I'm not in a space right to do that right now. However, I'm focusing on other things, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I think one of the, if I was to give a quick, you know, uh, 
piece of, of, of feedback is, you know, try to eliminate, <laughs> eliminate the word try. <laughs> to not try to eliminate. Yeah, eliminate, yeah. <laughs> And just, so, just an experiment, see what happens. So let's talk a little bit more about language because that's so very key, right? Mm -hmm. And we all do it. Like you said, you're not thinking about it and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to, you know, be more effective with my team or I'm going to try to communicate better with my partner or I'm going to try to get along with uh, mm -hmm. someone that um, maybe irks me a bit more. <laughs> so we're already telling, we're already selling to the con unconscious by using the word try, that we may or may not do it? Is that well, what we're saying? Well, it's, it's, it's not that we may or may not. Trying, if you're trying to do something, it automatically implies failure. Okay. okay. Right? So what kind of things should we consider with language? And what kind of things should we be tweaking if we're thinking of a goal? How should we be approaching our language if we could make some little tweaks mm -hmm. uh, along the way? Well, one of the things, again, is about um, I'm moving towards my goal of this. I am working on my goal of this, right? And really kind of and being in some ways specific around what are you doing, right? And it doesn't have to be big things, you know, something, one small thing that takes a few minutes a day. Um, for example, um, you know, um, reading something that's inspirational. Um, for example, you know, if you're looking to increase your business, making some phone calls, right? If you're looking to increase your, you know, the, 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 the connection with your partner, right? Doing little things like checking in during the day or just, it doesn't have to be big, but it's doing those things and holding, first of all, it's using that imagination, seeing it as already happened. Right. So projecting into the future, right? Like, so we, what we know with goals is when, you know, we, we all have that proverbial to-do list. Do you have yes. lists and sub lists of lists? Oh <laughs> yes. Guilty. Yes. Um, and kind of looking at your goals and breaking it down and, and really probably what you're saying is almost um, rewarding yourself or acknowledging with the brain that I have made X amount of phone calls today, or I you know, spent 10 minutes with my son having a really nice dialogue um, if I'm trying to get a better communication or my family sat down to dinner um, and we actually had a nice dinner and we took time after dinner to, to have conversation. So you're acknowledging where you are in the process versus not focusing on what you didn't achieve. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, right? It's, 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 it's you know, looking towards those improvements, or even if you're at the starting process, of, it's about creating that image in your mind of what the outcome, what, what will it look like when this has manifested? Because let's right. talk about desired outcome, because that's important, right? Like, um, so what kind of things do you do um, with hypnosis? Or we didn't even talk about NLP, but you can chat and tell us a little bit more about that to get ourselves. What, what kind of things can we do to get into a desired state? Let's say, you know, with some of my goals, because we're so close, some of my goals are to speak more and mm -hmm. to be able to travel more, um, you know, spend time in Florida with RJ, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How would I put myself into a state or what kind of things, what tactical things could I consider doing mm -hmm. to be able to remind the unconscious, which because that's what you're telling me to do daily right. um that, that that that's where i want to be okay so um want to kind of just split it up between some of the the quick stuff and also the the hypnosis so one of the things i do want to i do want to want to cover uh with your viewers or your listeners about is hypnosis i think there's a few myths about hypnosis um that aren't necessarily helpful for people for example um and it is possible but but um and most people think of hypnosis as a one shot deal. Like I go once and everything's fixed. And there are some people who experience change within one session, right? Mm -hmm. However, depending on the complexity of what's going on at the subconscious mind, it may require more than one session. Most of my colleagues talk about three to five sessions. Um, some depending on, you know, if you're talking about trauma, 
and sort of uh, more complex issues, you're talking about more than that, um, more, more sessions than that, and depending on where an individual can go. So what I want to really talk about is, you know, um, don't necessarily go into it expecting, oh, it's one session and I'm out. Um, it just depends on the situation. The other thing is, is, uh, and perhaps the most important thing I can impart is that hypnosis is not something that someone does to you. Hollywood has not done hypnosis or hypnotists or hypnotherapists any favors by portraying it as something that we do and people fall under our spell and then they do, we, they do, you know, whatever the hypnotist wants them to do. It's, it's a feedback loop right? It's, it's a participant, it's a partnership and it's a participatory uh, process. It's, it's the person, the individuals involved. So someone who comes in um, and says to me, well, I can't be, I can't be hypnotized. You know, I would say, well, what makes you say that? Right. And they'll say, well, uh, you know, I just, I, I get nervous or this or that. So, you know, part of that is uh, the process is, in order to enter into trance, you have to allow yourself to, mm. right? It's a, it's a voluntary process. Um, if, if you're not in a space that you can do that, there's, there's nothing that I can do that's going to make you fall into trance, right? And in fact, trance is a naturally occurring phenomena, right? It happens all the time. Driving on the highway, have you ever uh, been on the highway and then all of a sudden you kind of, come up and you look and you're like, oh, where am I? And it takes you a few minutes to or reorient and or you perhaps have realized you, you missed your exit a way back, mm -hmm. right? That's because you were in a trance because your body is used to driving because of the repetition, mm -hmm. right? Habits are formed by uh, emotion and repetition and and because you've been driving for so long it's become automatic and then your brain goes elsewhere and away you go mm -hmm. uh, or have you ever gotten caught up in a movie right mm -hmm. watching a movie something happens and you jump well it's not because it's happening in your life but you've gotten so absorbed in the movie that you're experiencing it as though it was happening to you and your logical mind knows that this is not real, that these are actors, there are cameras, there are sound people, there's costume people, makeup people, right? Your logical mind knows all that, but as you get drawn into the movie and you go into that trance, that all falls away. So, so that's the thing, right? It's, it's really important for people to know. It's, it's, it's not something that is done to them, it's something that they participate in. And the hypnotist is only there to facilitate the process. And also to, you know, to do, to help with some of the, to facilitate some of the change work. Because it is scary, right? You're, you're <laughs> people think that you're going to do something to them. And, you know, all of a sudden they're, I think they think of street, street hypnosis, which is a completely different thing um, yes. to when someone comes to you and they're really just trying to make change, whether it's to feel happier or to, um, you know, follow their goals or, um, get better in relationships, whatever. The, the kind of issues that you're dealing with are everyday normal stuff. But like you said, it could be um, a lot, maybe a little bit more in depth, but people come to you for everyday problems too, correct? Absolutely. It's every everyday problems. I've, you know, I mean, there's been lots of things, you know, um, you know, I've helped, uh, anxiety is a, a big one. Um, depression's a big one as well. Um, you know, things like, um, tinnitus so ringing in the ears that's been something and you know someone came to see me with respect to that so there's there's lots of applications to to hypnosis um but you're right i mean there's it's the it's the whole perception of hypnosis right a lot of people some of the fears uh they're afraid that um they're going to lose control you don't lose control mm -hmm. you can't uh, i can't make anyone do something they wouldn't normally do right. uh, people the other fear is um telling your secrets mm -hmm. again right? You're not going to tell anybody anything that, that you would normally tell them. And the other thing is, the other fear that people have is being stuck in hypnosis, mm. right? And if you don't keep the trance going, it, it won't last, right? There's, there's no known recorded as far as, as in, in any of my research or my teachers, there's no known um, instance of anybody getting stuck. So what is trance, Louise? 
Well, I, 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 trance is um, is a, a state of focused absorption. Okay. okay. Right, where you're you're absorbed in something, you're focused on something, and it's just that intense absorption with a particular item or a particular you know that a particular it, it, you're just absorbed in something so in hypnosis I mean that's where the, um, the the pendulum comes in or the spirals come in it's a way of having someone focus their attention on something right and 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 once you, someone focuses their attention on something and then they listen to you know um, whether it's a whatever kind of induction it is right that whole process of, of integrating trance uh, and just allowing or the person, some people are natural. They, they have this natural ability to put themselves into trance. So, and when, you're, so when you're putting them into trance, is it, is it to focus on the issue they're coming with? Or are you putting them into trance to be able to have them look at things from a different perspective to, okay. to get rid of that negative belief? So what I want to correct in your language is, I'm not putting anybody in trance. They are allowing themselves to come into trance. They are, they are okay, let me, let me simplify it. If someone comes to me and they say, you know, and they, they're coming for, for hypnosis um, or hypnotherapy, um, you know, if they follow in the process, if they follow the directions that I give them, they will, they will and allow themselves mm -hmm. to, to fall into trance and to go into trance and to go deeper into trance, then it will happen. Okay. Right. So that's the thing. It's not I really want to correct that, that it's it's totally a voluntary process. If someone says to me, well, I bet you you can't you know, you can't you can't hypnotize me. I'm going to say, yeah, you're right. I'm not even going to try, because if somebody is out to prove that I can't, it's, it's absolutely going to happen that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So so that's the thing. And so what happens is, well, and, and to answer your question, it. The answer is yes on both counts. Um, I, you know, part of the part of the issue might be to, to 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 discover some blocks to a particular goal, to discover some of the layers of a particular issue, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, I've had someone come to me wanting to work on, you know, a, and you know, as we work hypnotically things come up and it indicates that there may be something else there. There may be B or C or D there, right? And then, of course, you, you know, you would possibly go into those issues if the, if the individual is okay with doing that. And so you explore what the blocks are and, and then you would clear each of those blocks to the point where it comes up to the original issue. So, so you could be doing that. And on the other side is, is so clearing things, obviously, that are getting in the way of someone uh, meeting their goals and on the other side actually putting in some suggestions to to have things happen more easily and effortlessly to you know so that there's there's that piece again mm -hmm. so getting rid of what's in the way and then promoting the change work and the actual change that's desired so I, I come in I allow myself to get into trance I there's blocks that come up along the way you assist mm -hmm me to clear those mm -hmm. and then to look at the desired state of where I want to be well the desired state is already there when you come in mm -hmm. right that that's what we would be talking about you said I'm coming in for you know I want to increase my motivation okay, okay. right and so I so we would talk about what that looks like right well how will you know that's happened what will be different how will you be behaving mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then in the hypnotic process you know, either if there are some blocks, looking at some of the blocks, so some of the beliefs or, or whatever that may have happened. Um, and then the other, on the other piece, installing some, some resources. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, in some cases, it's a, it's, it's a two-pronged approach. It's clearing barriers and, and then installing the resources. Because really, people who come for assistance oftentimes are, are feeling unresourceful. Mm -hmm. and, and part of hypnosis is to install those resources. So a resource might be a, a con a like saying something to yourself or focusing on a positive part of your life. Is that what a resource is? Well, those are conscious processes, Roxanne. When, okay. you're, when you're dealing with the unconscious, it would be, um, you know, that's where, where post-hypnotic suggestion comes in. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're making suggestions directly to the unconscious mind around 
you know, those, those things that would, you know, create, let's say, using the example motivation. Okay. Right. So you're so, actually suggesting it and the unconscious mind is picking it up and integrating it based on the state they're in. Yes. And the interesting thing about the unconscious mind is, as you know, in, in our minds, things that are similar cluster together. Mm -hmm. So you may, you, you know, we may target a particular instance or a particular thing, um, area that you want to develop more motivation in, but anything that has motivation as a theme, the unconscious mind will then generalize and mm -hmm. might, you might find things, um, happening in another area that, that really wasn't targeted, but it's like, Hey, wow, that's really cool. That, that, you know, I didn't ask for that to happen, but it's happening. And that's usually because the unconscious mind, you know, looks for anything that is similar and then will, will generalize the, the process. Yeah. Stickiness by association. <laughs> so you might affect another part of the person's, uh, you know, theme that fits that they right. weren't, they, they weren't even trying to target, but it, it by just focusing on that, it, it, it clears it away for them. That's, that's, exactly. uh, that's quite, that's quite fascinating. Now, Tell me if someone's listening and they're, they're scared, mm -hmm. what's, what, do you have some words for them um, about uh, hypnosis? If they really want to try it. If they really want to try it, I would suggest that, you know, they find someone um, and it's okay. I mean, myself, when, when I'm doing hypnosis, I will talk to people about the most common fears. Mm -hmm. And I talk to people until, and I, I get them to ask questions, talk to me about, you know, some people say, well, I've heard this and I, you know, I've read that and, and we talk about it, it's mm -hmm. talking about it. And then I answer any questions they might have. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and then, and then, you know, and then just taking it a bit at a time. Usually it's, it's around fears. It's around, like I said, I, I went through the three biggest ones. Typically when people realize that I'm not going to make them clear out their bank accounts, I'm not going to make them cluck like a chicken. They're not going to tell me their secrets and I'm not going, you know, they're not going to stay stuck in hypnosis forever in a trance forever. Typically those are the big ones. But again, it's all about asking questions, educate yourself. So I'm sure everyone's wanting to know more. And uh, so why don't you tell them a little bit about, um, where you can, they can locate you if they wanted to reach out and, and uh, figure out uh, if they could work with, re, where, where could they find you? Um, my, I have a website. It's uh, Vibrant Life. Uh, the, the URL is www.vibrantlife.biz. Awesome. Well, again, Louise, uh, you know, you and I can talk a lot about this and I've actually been through uh, some hypnosis with Louise and it's, it, you know, and still I'm fascinated by the, the actual technical part to things and um, the unconscious is, you know, so vast and, you know, from being in the field, as long as we both have, it, we're, we're constantly learning and know that, you know, you can bypass those things that you no longer want in your life. It just Sometimes it takes a method and I would say, or an approach of looking at it differently. And, you know, oftentimes we might get tripped up and we're like, okay, so how do I keep, I seem to be going around the same bend again, over and over again. And that made me need that, you know, you need to be able to create long term sustainable change that you need to tap into the unconscious, which really is kind of driving most of our lives. And if it's driving you in a direction you're thinking it's no longer working, uh, that's where something like hypnosis, uh, is important. So again, I thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you're needing more information on me, you can meet, meet, reach me at roxanderhodge.com. I'm a keynote speaker, a trainer, and a coach. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, Louise. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Authentic Living with Roxanne, creating the space for positive, healthy change. Roxanne is a keynote speaker, psychotherapist, and coach. To work with Roxanne, visit roxanderhajcom slash blueprint. We'll see you next time on Authentic Living with Roxanne.